Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we have a trio of meetings this afternoon, and we're going to take them slightly out of order than presented on the screen uh, previously. I will call to order the joint meeting of the Glendale City Council and the Glendale Housing Authority for August 27, 2019. May we have the roll call for the council? Councilmember Devine? Here. Garpetian? Here. Quintero? Here. Magajanian? Present. Mayor Najarian? Here. For housing, please. Sorry, Member Devine? Here. Najarian? Here. Parazian? Here. Quintero? Here. Garpetian? Here. Chiragajanian? Present. May we have your report, please? The agenda for the August 27, 2019 Joint Public Meeting of the City Council and Housing Authority was posted on Thursday, August 22, 2019 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Thank you. May we have the first item? Director of Community Development regarding consideration of two property acquisitions for future development of affordable housing and a contract amendment for property appraisal, acquisition, and maintenance services related to therefore or there too. Uh, 1A, housing authority motion authorizing executive director to execute a purchase and sale agreement with the Pacific Bell Telephone Company to acquire real property located at 515 Pioneer Avenue for all inclusive price of $13,720. B, housing authority resolution of appropriation in the amount of $13,250,000. C, Housing Authority motion authorizing executive director to execute a purchase and sale agreement and lease agreement with Tobin World to acquire real property located at 900, 912, and 920 East Broadway and 117 South Belmont for the acquisition price of <coughs> 12 million 100,000. D, Council motion authorizing the city manager to execute an amendment to the professional service agreement with Overland, Pacific, and Cult. Cutler LLC OPC to increase the contract amount by 40,000 for a new not to exceed total of 190,000 through the end of the contract term E housing authority resolution of appropriation in the amount of 40,000 to fund the OPC contract amendment. That's it. Ms. Beers? Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, Chair Avajanian, members of the Housing Authority. Um, we are here before you today, uh, as the clerk read into the record, regarding two property acquisitions for uh, future development of affordable housing in the City of Glendale, which has been and continues to be uh, a strong commitment and priority for the City Council and the Housing Authority. With that, I'd like to ask Mr. Fortney uh, to come up and, and give you a brief presentation on this item. Um, but I, I would just like to say that this has been a, a um, long process for us to get to this point in terms of negotiations, and we're very happy and, and proud to be before you to present these two properties and um, ask that uh, you um, approve uh, both items before you, which I know is, again, a huge, huge priority for the City Council, and hopefully as staff we've been able to bring uh, some of your um, thoughts and, and your desires to bring affordable housing to the City of Glendale, uh, more affordable housing to the City of Glendale, uh, more of a reality on, on an annual basis. So with that, Mr. Fortney. Good afternoon, City Council, Mayor, uh, Housing Authority Board members, Housing Authority Chair, Mike Fortney. The uh, city's housing principal or principal housing project manager. Um, so we have basically three items in front of you today. One is the approval of the uh, purchase and sale of the uh, uh, 515 Pioneer. That's the AT&T site. Um, we also have uh, a purchase and sale agreement as well as a short-term lease back of 900 through 920 East Broadway. Uh, and then finally, we need to, um, or we're asking that uh, you add an additional $40,000 to the Overland Pacific Cutler contract. Those are the folks that are doing the uh, phase one, phase two environmental site assessments, doing the uh, appraisals for the property, things of that sort. So, um, talk to you about 515 Pioneer Drive briefly. It's a um, 2.8 acre site currently owned and operated by AT&T. AT&T was um, moving off the site, they're relocating their uh, operation there, so they had that property listed. Um, 2.8 acres, so over 121,000 square feet. It's a, it's a very large site. It's uh, zoned low-density residential currently. Uh, it would only allow 39 units 
Uh, with a uh, density bonus of 35%, you'd get to 53 total units, 48 of which would be market. Um, the price you see there, 13 million, our um, appraisal came in at $12 million even. Uh, AT&T uh, had an appraisal of 12.2 million, so we accepted AT&T's appraisal. Um, AT&T then uh, hired consultants to look at their F&E, their fixtures, furniture, and equipment, as well as their relocation costs, and did a very, very uh, thorough job of uh, detailing what can and can't go and the expense uh, related to that. We hired Overland Pacific Cutler to do a peer review of that work, and we accepted that. So that $13 million, it's actually 13 million, no thousands, 700 to the, to the, to the dollar. Um, that is all, an all-inclusive price to purchase that site and relocate AT&T. Um, and just briefly, with, in terms of site potential, planning staff uh, is currently looking at the uh, site and uh, drafting some site plans. Uh, we are expected to close on that site October 30th of this year. Uh, AT&T, we had, we had talked about the end of September, but AT&T needs a little more time to, um, to move their equipment out. So this is, uh, this is the site map here. Um, it's really the corner of Pioneer, and it doesn't show it, but um, um, Pacific is right there to the right, and then, of course, the 134 freeway. Um, it's actually interesting. For those who don't know the site up there, um, the northwest corner, under, there's a, a pedestrian tunnel underneath that freeway that leads to a, a large park. So I think part of the design of that site would be to enhance that uh, entrance there. It's pretty neat. Uh, and then there's an aerial view of the site now. So there's basically three um, structures sitting on the site now. So, yeah, so, and then there's just some photographs. And uh, that's, that's, that's all I have there for the uh, 515 Pioneer site. So. The next site that we are asking you to consider the uh, purchase sale and short-term lease back would be a 900 to 920 East Broadway. Um, it's a 1.6 acre site. Uh, 34,500 square feet on one site and then some historic structures on the other site. And uh, it'll be a lot easier to see once I show you that. Um, we initially offered $12 million on this property. Uh, the appraisal came in at 12.1, so I think we did a pretty good job of uh, estimating what that cost would be. So the purchase sale agreement uh, reflects that price of $12.1 million. <laughs> So the idea here is to convert the existing buildings, there's three historic buildings on site, into, and this is just an estimate at this point, uh, up to 52 senior units or perhaps 36 family units. And then in addition to that, uh, build new construction on the, uh, the second half of the site. Again, that'll be a lot more self-explanatory once you see the, uh, see the uh, aerial. Uh, expected close date on this one is uh, just 30 days from today, so we'll be, um, under the gun to get everything locked and loaded and uh, uh, through purchasing and through finance for treasurer's office to make sure that this, this uh, happens on time. There is, again, a short-term lease to uh, Tobin World on the site to the end of the calendar year for them to be able to wind down their operations. So this is the site map. It's just a few blocks, really, from here, just east on Broadway. Uh, this is an aerial view of the site. So what I was saying before, there's three historic properties. Those are over here on the you need the microphone, Mike. Oh, my. So the three historic properties are over on the left-hand side. Uh, we would do an adaptive reuse of those buildings. So those buildings would stay. Um, and then the, the other half of the site is the, uh, I'd call it multi-purpose room with the surface parking. That we would probably dem demo and then start with a new construction on it. So um, that is the site there. There's uh, some photographs of the front entrance of it. And... That's it for those two sites. Of course, I can answer questions as well. We also, I didn't mention this, we did a phase one environmental site assessment on both sites uh, on, on 900 Broadway. Uh, it was, there was no recommendation to do any further environmental assessment. On the AT&T site at 515 Pioneers, they, there was some um, suggestion for a phase two environmental system, further environment review. So we conducted a phase two environmental and uh, that, that came up, uh, the levels, I think the attorney can s speak to it more eloquently than I did, but there were no levels, uh, <coughs> toxic levels of any form at any found at any substantial um, amounts. So with that, and then finally again, uh, we're asking for $40,000 be um, 
added to the Overland Pacific Cutler uh, contract for the services that they have done and for services that they're going to continue to do. All right, thank you. Are there comments by counsel? Mr. Garbitchen? How much is their contract today, the current contract that we have um, 40000 to? I believe it is uh, amount uh, not to exceed 150000 So now it would go to 190000 not to exceed. So and that 190 is between these two properties? No, not even close. Oh, they have no. done other, right. other projects. Absolutely. Uh, not just housing, economic development, other divisions. Mm. Right. And the funding for these two projects, one is from Measure S and yes. the other one is? Yes, we have a combination of low and moderate income housing asset funds uh, and other local funds that we are using to acquire the 515 Pioneer site. And the, uh, pro the money for uh, 900 to 920 East Broadway, that is, that is Measure S money. Part of the $20 million you allocated to housing development. Um, I don't have questions, but maybe a couple of comments. So, so sorry. Go ahead, make your comments. Yeah, uh, I don't have any more questions. I, I, I really like these two sides for several reasons. Uh, one is it's not concentrated in the same area. I mean, our uh, affordable housing projects, most of them were concentrated in South Glendale on San Fernando Road, in that area. This one is, one is on Broadway and the other one is on, on uh, Pioneer. And the, the 66 unit is north of Glen Oaks, the one that we are completing right now, the senior housing. So it, it's, it spreads out and gives the community members to really enjoy the city uh, along with everyone else. Um, the other reason that I really like the, the Broadway project is that it's historic preservation. We preserve the, the property and we have an adaptive reuse and that property will never get demolished. So it's, it's a great thing that the city is stepping up to, to, to uh, preserve those, those three properties over there. I hope it will be easy to, to manage in the future to, for the adaptive reuse. I'm sure it would be, but uh, I really like those, those three properties. And I want to uh, thank my colleagues as well. I think this is a project that we all can celebrate together, that we all were very passionate about it, passing measure as allocating the funding for, for uh, affordable housing. And it's coming to, to flourishion uh, in a short period of time, and I want to uh, give a big, big shout out to our staff and everyone else in economic development, in housing uh, management that found these two sites and really went hard to to lock down these two properties for us because very, it's very difficult to find sites that are two and a half per acres or so. So with that, Mr. Mayor, I, I would move A, B, C, D, E when, when the time comes up. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Devine? Um, I just had uh, one question. Uh, Tobin World is uh, half the size, about half the size, and yet the the uh, cost is the same. Mm -hmm. Is that because of location? It's largely due to zoning. So AT&T site, 515 Pioneer, that's mm -hmm. R3050. It's very low density uh, zoning. Uh, the other one on Broadway, it's R1250, but be because it has over 90 feet of frontage, mm -hmm. it's the equivalent of R1000. There is no R1000 zoning, but that's the equivalent of it. So, uh, it's, it's, that's really the value, the difference in the value. So one's a 1.6 1 acre site, you're right, the other's 2.8. Right. Uh, it, but that's really the, the biggest reason is because of the zoning. Well, um, I, I just think that property, the Tobin World property, is a beautiful property and a great location. And um, uh, I'm, I'm so happy that we're able to, uh, to make this uh, uh, come to fruition. Uh, and I'm also... Um, Proud that we're using the Measure S funding because that was what we promised that we were going to do to use it for affordable housing, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So, um, I, I hope that the uh, all those people out there that uh, that supported Measure S for that reason will be will be extremely happy. Um, the AT&T property is again it seems a great location for affordable housing for any housing, um, especially now that you tell me there's a park nearby of some sort, and, and uh, that's always, always a, um, uh, a positive when it comes to, uh, to property and apartments and uh, family living. So, so for those reasons, um, I think these are really good uh, acquisitions and uh, I'm proud, uh, proud of staff and everyone involved in, in, having, in getting this done. Thank you. Mr. Quintero. 
Yeah, I'm very happy we're moving forward with the uh, purchase. Um, I think the question I have, so I think it's going to be quite a while before anything is actually built on the site or even demolition taking place. Has there been any consideration to maybe leasing the property for a short period of time or just an attempt to get some income? Tobin World is very well taken care of and what are it? Right. So we do have a uh, short-term lease with Tobin World while they right. wind down their operations to the end of the uh, calendar year. There's also an option for them to lease back for an additional six months to June 30th a portion of that site. Uh, beyond that, no, we haven't had any conversation uh, regarding leasing either of those sites in it for a long term. We want to get together and really look at strategizing. You're right. It's going to take time to get the money together to finance these projects. Most likely we'll go to the 9% tax rates, things of that sort. So. Uh, that's that's kind of the next steps would be to, to really look at how long we're going to be sitting on the site, how long will it take us to start development, and what can we do uh, with the sites in the meantime. Yeah, I'm just thinking in the meantime, maybe there's a way to get some income once Tobin World leaves, but uh, the AT&T site, the same way. I haven't been inside, but from the outside, they're well taken care of. So, yeah. Um, and then on the AT&T site, hopefully the architects, it's right next to the freeway, so hopefully they're going to come up with some designs that are going to keep in mind you're on the Pacific Avenue exit right. uh, yes. from the 134, so yeah. it's going to have to you know, keep that in mind. But happy it's happening. It's going to be two great sites. Strike again. I'm very happy that we are going to have these two sites for affordable housing. From the day I came in, this was my major concern. As I mentioned before, we have to allocate $100 million. Again, I'm repeating myself, we have to allocate money and to catch up with building affordable housing. Glendale, since 1970s, we have 12, 1,245 affordable units. This is average becomes during this 43 years is like 30 units per year. It's amazing. It's so little. We cannot be proud of what we have done during this 43 years. That was not enough. An example why this was not enough, what has been done in Glendale, the city of Burbank, during the same period of time, with a population of 105,000 versus Glendale, which we have 200,000 residents, 200,000 population of Glendale is over 200,000 people. They have 1,600 affordable units. Pasadena, with population of 143,000 people, they have approximately 2,000 affordable housing units. So in my opinion, we are way behind similar cities. So we have to catch up. This is great what we are going to have on these two sites, but it's not enough. We have to work harder. We have to catch up. So however, our residents just want a safe, quality place to call home. Very simple requirement. Lots of families, they had to leave Glendale because rents went through the roof. I mean, it's unbelievable. One bedroom units is like 1500 to $2,000. So we have to do something. Half or more. Uh, Home renters are cost burden. It means that they pay more than 50% of their rent where they have to pay 50% uh, of their income, where they have to pay one third of their income for that purpose to rent a house. So uh, the average wage worker would have to work 99 hours, not 40 hours per week, but 99 hours to afford to rent a house in our city. And this is just for 
to afford one bedroom apartment. When res residents have stable living conditions, the benefits are very clear. Kids do better in school and families will be happier. So, and healthier, of course. Nationally, there is overwhelming support for greater federal involvement for affordable housing. So the cities should be more involved. This view is supported by over 94% of Democrats to come up with affordable housing for the general public. 87% of unaffiliated voters and over 73% of Republicans. They all agree that we cities, counties, state, and federal government should do more. And this should be priority for everybody. I firmly believe that one of the primary responsibilities of mine, I'm talking about myself, I hope will be a responsibility of everybody on this dais, or all those dioceses on other cities. However, for mine <coughs> is to ensure that Glendalians have a place to call home. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, for the large part, uh, echo the remarks of my clients, of my, not clients. <laughs> no thanks. You're not on the payroll yet, guys. Um, or I'm not on yours. Uh, of my colleagues, and uh, just think it's a good thing, great thing that we're doing. We made great, great progress uh, with these two properties, and we look forward to seeing designs and uh, details on the possibilities uh, to come before us soon. So we have, um, let's see, one, two. I move A, one A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C. Second. Second. Mr. Uh, one is Mayor, a Mr. council Chair. motion. Yes, so. A, B, C, and E are for the housing authority, and okay. item D is for the city council. I move one mm. A, B, C, E for, for council. Housing. For housing. Second. 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 For, let's take roll for call housing? for the housing issues. Oh, for housing. Yeah. Authority Member Devine? Yes. Najarian? Yes. Parazian? Yes. Pintero? Yes. Garbetian? Yes. Chiragajan? Yes. And is there a motion? I move one D. One D. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Council Member Devine? Yes. Garbetian? Yes. Pintero? Yes. Agajanian? Yes. Mayor Najarian? Yes. That concludes our business. Is there a motion to adjourn for the council? So moved. Second. And I'll move to adjourn for the housing authority. Second. We are adjourned. So now for the housing. Good afternoon. Welcome to the